The Girl by Lydia Yuknovich. You must picture your image of Eastern Europe in your mind's eye, whatever that image is, however it came to you. Winter, that white. One winter night when she is no longer a child, the girl walks outside, her shoes against snow, her arms cradling a self. Her back to a house not her own, but some other. It is a year after the blast that has atomized her entire family in front of her eyes. She is six. It is a house she has lived in with a widow woman who took her in. Orphan of war, girl of nothingness. But that night has never left her. It is an unrelenting bruise. It's blue black image purling in and out of memory forever. Nor will it ever leave her body, the blast forever injuring her spine, a sliver of metal piercing her flesh and entering her. So that all her life she will carry the trace of that moment between her vertebrae. And then again her mind moves to the moment of the blast, the singular fire lighting up the face of her father, her mother. First white, then yellow, then orange and blue, then black. Then nothing, her head swiveled by the force of the blow away from them. This did not frighten her. What used to be nightmares have transformed into color and light, composition and story. Is with her now, lifelong companion, still life of a dead family. The snow begs her senses now, and she wishes she had a coat. She wishes she had tied her shoes properly, worn proper socks. The moon, however, makes an entire setting for her motion, and in this way she feels lit up. She hears something not her, and not the night, and not the wide expanse waiting before her. Her feet are cold, and she can suddenly feel how numb her hands are, shoved in her armpits. She does not know at first what she is hearing. At first, it seems like the sound of hummingbirds' wings, but that is not possible. The fluttering were quiet the secrets there and then gone. I remember my father, his eyes, his words. She hears it again then and knows it. A wolf caught in a trap. She looks down the fence line. It is a wolf beyond beautiful, with its leg caught in a trap. She moves closer, aware now of how the cold is biting into her. She studies the wolf. The wolf is smart. It is almost finished. She thinks, for only the briefest of thoughts, are releasing it. The wolf is nearly free. In its freedom, it will lose a leg. It will be worth it. She holds perfectly still more still than a dead person, which she has seen many times, a corpse in the snow. She watches the wolf chew its own leg by the light of the moon, by the rhythm of its journey. The moon makes its slow arc against the sky and inside the moon's movement. Reflected in the girl's eyes, the wolf finally frees itself. It was then that she did something pure-bodied, child-minded, she goes to where the rust orange and black metal of the trap sits, holding its severed limb. To where blood and animal labor have reddened and dirtied the pristine white of the snow, like the violence against a canvas. There, without thinking, she pulls down her pants, her underwear, squats with primal force. And pisses and pisses where the crime happened, a steam cloud moves upward from the snow and the blood as the relief of rising heat warms her skin. Her eyes close. Her mouth fills with spit. This is how the sexuality of a girl is formed. An image at a time against white. Taboo. Thoughtless. Corporeal. She opens her eyes. The piss smell and the blood smell and the youth smell of her skin mingle. She licks her lips. The wolf runs. It runs three-legged, like all damaged creatures, 
across the snow. She thinks this is true. She thinks this is a life. She thinks I do not want to die, but my life will always be like this. Wounded an animal, lurching against white, Bent down and rubbed her hands in the blood. She lifted her hands, her eyes, her heart to the heavens. In the space where they say God is a God she's never known. A God she will replace with something else. Her small hands make what might look to an outsider like a prayer shape. But she is not praying. She closes her eyes. This is the night. It happens. She looks down at her red hands. She laughs. Up. She bends down and wrenches the severed limb from the trap, and then she runs toward the cell. What is a girl but this? This obscene and beautiful making against the expanse of white. This brilliant imagination. Inventing meaning. 